What's up, guys? Huh? We're not, we're not gonna feed you, bro. We think you're awesome, though. Just so you guys know, he is this close. Yeah, I think that's why they come up this close. They think we're gonna feed them. But I don't, I don't really like them to feel that way. I mean, I think they're cool, but I don't really want them to be this close, you know? Like, it's dangerous for them. What's up, y'all? I'm Alan Hayne, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for coming back for yet another week. Okay, so today is very important and I need you to pay very close attention. In fact, we're gonna get super technical today. What I'm gonna give you today is an increased strategy for domination. I've talked a few times over the years about how important it is to dominate for Halloween. It's kind of the last time of the year where everybody's gonna come by your house and see your lawn. And in most parts of the country, the weather is still cooperating so you can keep her green, keep her looking good, and let everybody see that last bit of domination before we go into the long winter. So again, these are gonna be kinda next level tips. And in fact, the tips that I'm gonna give you now are gonna set you up ahead of time so that way when I put out my actual Halloween video this year and actually show you how to completely dominate on Halloween, hopefully you'll be ready and in a very, very similar spot. The other thing that's gonna happen is when I put out my Halloween domination video on Halloween day, I'm also gonna share with you all of you that way back, I don't know when that was, early summer, or late spring when I did my uh, Malorganite contest or whatever, a bunch of you guys submitted photos and videos and stuff and all of you got your t-shirts and everything after that, but I'm gonna share those photos and videos in that video on Halloween day. All right, so in case I wasn't clear, because I'm not really sure how I'm explaining this is, today's video is 100% set up for Halloween domination. Then on Halloween day, I'm gonna release a video that shows you the results of Halloween domination, and I'm also at that time gonna share all of your domination photos and videos. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. Now the lawn is still struggling a little bit as you saw in my last video, again from some herbicide damage that I did to it, getting a little heavy handed, and then of course just from killing the nuts edge and stuff. So this is good because you can see I got a little bit of a challenge here, and I've got what, like 15 days to get it? Now the other thing here is, is I'm trying to, again, I, I always try to tell you guys, it's about how you think. It's about how you strategize and approach the battle year long. And I'm trying to help you think in a certain way. So that's really what this is. This is an exercise of the mind and understanding your lawn and feeling your lawn and working with your lawn and understanding what your lawn is going through and the environment that it lives in. And that's why we talk so much about weather windows. So let's just go right here in the garage and let's look at the weather windows and what we're facing right now here in October. Now, I'm gonna recommend that all of you get a lawn journal. This is mine, I don't really share this with everyone, but you can keep all of your information in here, your history of your lawn, what you're doing. You can see here, June 12th, this was a breakthrough day for me in the lawn. We were getting to know each other for a couple months and I felt like this day was really important in our relationship and the growth of it. It's when I taught her about throw her down for the, for the first time for real. Into June, oh look at that, I remember this, I had a big overgrowth. She made it though, I, I had to encourage her. Here are my apps, you can see putting down a pound a month. I think I've been pretty much showing you guys that for the most part, here's where we are now. Oh, this is beautiful, these memories. Oh yeah, Mothman prophecies in July. Oh, I remember this fight. I thought, uh, uh, I don't wanna remember that. Oh. Oh, this is a beautiful memory, July 4th. Look at this. Oh, I remember these. Just look at those beautiful tips. Okay, I realize the jokes about tips might be over the top. <laughs> Sorry about that. Anyway, all right, so I journaled it out here for you guys. First of all is, these temperatures, remember these are extended periods and we're talking about soil temperatures, not outside air temp. Even though outside air temps sustain for extended periods will dictate soil temps to the three inch mark. And that's all we care about with soil is about three inches deep. Also keep in mind that watering your lawn can help prolong anything we're gonna talk about here. So the more you water, and I don't want you to go nuts, but if you keep irrigating, that will slow down this process. 
So here we go. All right, so here we go. So we're gonna start with the warm season grasses. We're gonna talk about when they start going dormant when it gets cool, not summer dormancy, winter dormancy here, okay? So Bermuda, starting hitting 60, and you're gonna start to slow way, way, way down in your growth and you get below 50, again, extended periods, you're gonna be in dormancy. So keep that in mind. Again, watering can help push that out. St. Aug is a little bit more sensitive, which is why we have it further down here in the south. So 65 will start to slow the growth majorly, 55 and uh, we're heading out. Again, don't, don't get me wrong here. I mean, when we get to like 68, it slows down. When we get to 67, it slows down, but 65 is when it's a noticeable slowdown. And I've already got a little bit of that going on now because I have been getting some nighttime temps sustained for several hours around that 65, but we haven't been this low yet and we won't be for quite some time. And during the day, we're still getting up to 90. Centipede, a little different here. It doesn't really go dormant, which is why if you have a centipede lawn, you probably know you have to water all winter or it will die. Um, but once you get below 60, your growth is retarded very, very slowly. So something to consider. As you guys can see, those of you in these transition zones, like in Georgia with Bermuda and Centipede, you actually have the biggest challenge when it comes to late season green. You have a bigger challenge than anyone because Bermuda can survive way down south here and super hot, but it you know, can't survive that well much further north of where you are. Same with same Centipede here. Anyway, Zoysia, uh, 65, you're gonna be in a major slowdown and 55, you're out. Uh, Zoysia, I actually think I actually personally think 70 degrees slows it way down. I think zoysia needs to be at 90 degrees to be happy year round. But anyway, that's about where I'm, from my experience and from what I'm reading. All right, cool season. So these are all about the same, Cape Kentucky bluegrass, fescue, uh, rye. 55, uh, you're slowing down. You're gonna see, we're not that far off here, right? It's really about extremes and tolerance. Um, you know, because in the winter here, you guys get in the negatives and this grass can handle it, whereas this one can't. But you can see that they both, and then in the summer, this, these grasses can handle 95 plus, whereas these can't. But there's a lot of similarities too, as far as like the perfect temperature, you know, around that 78 to 80 is about perfect for these guys, about 80 or so. These guys are doing really, really well. Um, and about 80, these guys are doing really well, so 75, 80, so kind of interesting. But anyway, Kentucky Bluegrass, 55, you're way slowed down. Um, I had 50 in there, but I'm telling you, back with my fescue, my tall fescue, the way I ran it, uh, 40 to 45 is when I would be out, but I'd still be pretty green at 45, even for sustained periods. Um, but again, your mileage may vary. Keep in mind, sustain and keep watering. So here we go. So these are the important weather windows to keep in mind as we try to execute this strategy. Okay, so the reason that was important and the reason we went over that is because next I'm gonna talk to you about timing because we got a specific date here. This isn't about you know just fertilizing the lawn, keeping it green, keeping it looking nice. This is about a specific date and a specific time that we wanna dominate. So knowing your weather and then especially knowing how fast is your lawn growing? How vigorous is it? As we're coming into this downturn, right? We're kind of asking the lawn to kind of a little bit. And, and that's why I pointed out the similarities between the grass types. We're all kind of facing the same thing. It just depends what part of the country we're in. But when you look at it on the averages, the grass types kind of even out. I hope you get what I'm saying there. So the idea being, I need you to pay attention to how fast your lawn is growing and look at the temperatures based on what I just showed you, the temperatures now, but also the temperatures over the next 10 to 15 days. Check out the forecast, check out what the normal temps are and check out what your current temps are and understand what kind of sustained temperatures are you going to have. Are they going to be abnormally low? If that's the case, you're going to have to start this process a little earlier. Are they going to be abnormally higher? Well, then you have a chance to start it a little bit later. So with that, let me go ahead and give you guys the exact windows for October Halloween domination. All right, so first, and I know this is a lot of math, all right, but sometimes we gotta get down and do, the, do some things down and dirty here. So our first thing is, is an application of Milo. If you're running super cool right now, you wanna go 15 days out. Again, I don't care if you're north or south. 15 days out if you're running cold. If you're running hotter, nine days out. Now, if this was the middle of the summer, I would say that eight days or even seven days would it would take for you to get full effect with Milo. But because we're in the fall, I would at least go nine days, but 15. Now you can tell um, today is the 15th for me, so I'm at the end of this window. I'm gonna go ahead and do this. 
right now anyway just for sake of this video but again guys between 9 and 15 days and you just have to decide based on where your grass type is and what your temperatures look like sustained as well as how much watering you're doing in irrigation as to what this window looks like for you but definitely not more than 15 days out because we want to be at peak but not any closer than nine so somewhere in between there for milo now with that uh, we're gonna do some calculations here, but before we do that, let me give you a pro tip on Milo. So obviously we like to have our Milorganite in our lawn, and actually if you applied Milorganite to your lawn before, there's a certain distinct smell that you just become to love. I love it a lot. But there's also a way to keep your garage dominating over the winter, and that is to season it with a couple bags of Milo. I'm gonna show you what baby Milo is for uh, in a minute as far as it comes to air freshening, but right now, Typically, you want your garage, you know, you're coming into winter, I actually cleaned the garage out, but you wanna keep this garage dominating through the winter, and the way you do that is to keep it properly seasoned or properly scented. Now, two things to keep in mind. If you don't have enough Milo in your garage, it's gonna kinda have a weird, off in the corner, like a small mouse might have died smell. And, and that's not what we want. However, if you have too much, then you get way too much of that beautiful blueberry smell. And that beautiful blueberry smell gets a little over the top and mm, I don't know. But if you plan it out just right, you'll season your garage and it'll smell like a beautiful Milo pie. And it's pretty easy, the calculation that I'm gonna give you here, you don't even need to write it down. It's basically one bag per size car garage. So for example, I have a two and a half car garage here, so I need two and a half bags. So I've actually got three in here. And ideally, now these are gonna be gone in a minute, so I'm gonna have to restock for the winter. But ideally, you literally would have two and a half bags, two unopened and one opened. And that's gonna give you that perfect season. And my friends, that's what you call a pro tip. Now, another thing, a lot of that stuff's gone. Wonder where that went. All right, there it is. Stomp's getting married, so he needs some good lawn care stuff. So he's gonna take this to a better place where he could use it. Farewell, Toro. Thanks, lawn care or not. I appreciate it, brother. Sick. All right. It's awesome. Look at that truck full of gear. Oh, and here's one more thing. This is a car air freshener. <laughs> nice blueberry asshole smell in your car. I can just hang it in the thing, maybe put it behind my head as a, as a pillow. Yeah, you can give it a nice... Maybe, maybe grow my hair back out a little better. Yeah. All right, so back to it. So again, we, we care mostly about the nitrogen here, and uh, Milo is a 540, so we're gonna put down 15 pounds per 1,000 square feet. So 15 times five is 0.75, and that's gonna give you your three quarter pound in. Not going with a full pound here. Again, we're slowing down on the push, uh, but three quarter pound is just fine, north, south, east, or west. And again, 15 pounds for every 1,000 square feet. All right, and now we're gonna get a little more advanced. I want you to get some liquid potash, potassium. We're gonna put this down. This is gonna give you a super green color. So the Milo is gonna push us nice and blue because it's got the iron in there, and it's also got nitrogen, which gives us a nice dark green. And the potassium here is gonna give us a nice, brighter, truer, Kelly green color on top of that. I want you to put down just under quarter pound, 15 days ahead of time and another quarter pound five days ahead. You can vary this by two or three days. This one you can vary by one or two days, but not closer to Halloween, but you can back it up a little bit. This one here, depending on temperatures, you'll see results in about five days. However, to get full results, we're gonna hit it with a little bit now and then a little bit on top later. So again, you can vary these by one or two days, but don't get too close to Halloween or you won't see this one. So again, back that one up to six or seven days and you're fine. Now, as far as mix rates, this is what I'm working with right here. But I'll give you a little bit more commentary on how I'm gonna mix this and how you can mix it and what you can find. I'll link in the description below while I go ahead and apply this. You're gonna use a hand can for this and you're gonna do it nice and easy. Okay, last tip and then I'm gonna go ahead and enjoy my mow here and then do my apps. I'm not sure how much of that I'll show you guys, but I'll show you guys enough so that way you can see it getting done so you can look forward to what you're gonna see on Halloween. But this one is actually a tip for those of you with St. Augustine grass. Those of you guys up north, you guys do your lawn striping. I don't need to tell you about that. There's a bazillion videos that I've done and everybody else has done on how to stripe your lawn, how to do this, how to do that, blah, blah, blah. Point them out how you want. 
However, St. Augustine grass is just a little bit different. You guys have asked me several times why I don't lawn stripe anymore, and I do, and you've seen it last week, for example. But actually, St. Augustine grass doesn't look that good striped. In fact, I don't think it looks that good fresh cut at all. St. Augustine actually looks really good about three to five days after a cut. And so the tip here is, if you have St. Augustine, is you should actually cut four days. Again, depending on how things are growing, right? You gotta kinda still work that out. But you wanna get a good inch of growth before Halloween. You want that full inch of growth right on Halloween day. And uh, the way that you're gonna get that, for me at least, is to mow four days before Halloween. So my grass will be standing up just perfectly looking proud on Halloween night. Either way, now I'm gonna go ahead and enjoy my mow, and then I'm gonna go ahead and put down my fert and my potassium. And I, I realize that might bring up a question too. Um, do you have to mow first or not? A lot of people ask that. No, for the Melorganite, you don't really. You could actually fertilize before and then mow and mulch. I've done videos before that show uh, whether or not the fert gets picked up by your mower, which I'll link to in the description below. But really, if you're mulching, actually it's not a bad idea to put the Milo down and then mulch mow on top of it just to help everything settle a lot deeper, a lot quicker. So that's actually a good idea there. Now, with the potash, a lot of you might be thinking, well, that's a foliar application, right? We want that to absorb through the leaves. And the answer is no, not in this case. I remember when we did iron, we did liquid iron apps, and yes, those are foliar. We want those to absorb. And by the way, if you wanted to do a liquid app of iron four or five days before Halloween, you could do that and give yourself a nice dark blue color. I'm actually going with the potassium because I want that nice push of true green color and so that's why I'm going that way. Iron is a foliar application however with this potash we really want this to be taken in by the roots. It's not necessarily such a foliar app so with that I'm going to cut first and then apply my liquid potash and then I'm going to water it in. So I want to go ahead and get everything as deep as possible as quick as possible. But that's a great question that you're going to ask in the comment. 